Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my TBR jar for 2024. Yes, I'm prepared. I thought I would show this video before I showed my TBR for, December, for January because obviously in January I'm going to be picking a book out of this. I may still be doing a jar for the oldest books on my TBR, I don't know yet. That's still debatable. But I have picked my books for the jar. There is one book that's carried over from last year. There is two classics, one thriller, one non-fiction, three historical fictions, three contemporaries and bits and bobs. And it is what it is. And I've picked books that I'm going to be happy. I think this year I've decided to pick books that I would be happy, that I really want to re read. And books that I'm excited about. Books that are not necessarily urgent, so they can be read at any point in the year. And they're not ones that are specifically for readathons, because that's something we obviously we all do. We have readathons. So these are all books that I want to read. So let me know, obviously, um, like at the end, with how you, which ones you think you're most excited for me to read. Let me know if the ones that are like you're like warning me about, because I'm slightly nervous. But yeah, that's enough. Hopefully, this won't be a long video because I've got loads to do. So the first one is a thriller that I got given last year. Um, How to Kill Your Family by Bella McKay. This was a new book out, I think, last year. I would never want to kill my family. I bloody love my family. But this looks like a thriller that's really good. It's, they say you can't choose your family, but you can kill them. Meet Grace Bernard, daughter, sister, serial killer. Grace has lost everything and she'll stop at nothing to get revenge. It's apparently dark, it's mysterious. It's not too long, but it's a beautiful, pretty book. It's a thriller book that I know I'm a bit hit and miss with thrillers, but this does look like one that will probably get me. And it's one I'm really excited about. So I can't wait to get that. Then we've got a book that was gifted to me by the lovely Danny from Danny's Book World last year for Christmas. It's Madame Bovary by Gustav Flubert. I probably will not say that right. It's a Wordsworth classic. It's a beautiful classic. I don't read many translated fictions. I don't read many modernish classics, but I believe this is a modern classic. Castigated for offending against public decency, Madame Bovary has rarely failed to cause a storm. For Flaubert's contemporaries, a fascination came from the novelist's meticulous account of provincial matters. I don't want to know too much. This does look like a good classic. It's a pretty classic, and it's one I'm really excited about. So this is one that I've chose partly because it's a beautiful cover. Danny got it for me, so Danny's probably got hopes for it, and I'm really looking forward to it. The next is a book that you would have seen on my um, oldest books on my TBR. This is 1984 by George Orwell. I got this for some insane reason. I think it was because it was on one of my bookish posters. But I'm really nervous by this because George Orwell's writings is not my kind of writing. But it's a modern classic. It's like this is the book of the 10th century that haunts us with even darker relevance. Hidden away from the, in the development record department of the sprawling Ministry of Truth. Winston Smith skillfully rewrites the past to suit the needs of the party, yet he inwardly rebels against the total totalitarian that he lives in, which demands absolute obedience and controls him with the, from the all-seeing telescreens and the watchful eye of the big brother. This is apparently supposed to be really interesting, but I don't know much more. It's not a long book, it's a shortish modern classic, but it's one I do, do want to get to, and I think... I need this to push me to read it because that's what the TBR jar is for, for this. It's, I need it to push me to read it. Then a bit of a random one to pick, but this is a prettyish one. It's a random one that I got from my cheap, from um, my charity shop. The Postcard from Paris. It's set in Paris, which is a place I would dream of going to. And so it's being noisy. Annie Lavelle is keen to put the spark back in her life. From, so when her elderly inher neighbour inherits an abandoned Parisian apartment, she goes to Paris to discover more. Her curiosity takes her on an unexpected turn of discovering a bundle of secret diaries hidden there by a young woman, Beatrice Crawford, who left England in 1916 to nurse soldiers in the fields of France. Following Beatrice's journey from the Great War through to the Roaring Twenties and to the very different life in Nazi-occupied Paris, Annie must piece together the events from the past if she's to feel, fulfil the legacy that Beatrice left her to find. This does look really interesting. I'm really excited. It's eras of history that I'm really excited about so I can't wait to get to this then so a book that was apparently the winner of the Pulitzer Prize in 2021 The Night Watchman by Louise Erdridge I know she got up for some other awards um, this is set in 1953 in the rural North Dakota 
Thomas War uh, the, the, is a night watchman for the very first factory to open near the Turtle Mountain, Mount, Mountain res Reservation. He is also a prominent Chippewa Chippewa council member and deeply troubled by the US government's proposed new emancipation bill. Far from offering the Chipetta more freedom, it, it's, it is a betrayal threatening the rights of Native Americans, their land and their very true identity. And I've just realised you're probably hearing the really great noisy washing machine in the background. I should have shut the door better. But yeah, this is one that really excites me. I got this for like 20 people in one of my other charity shops. So this is one that I'm looking forward to. It's probably the biggest book on here. It's like... I suppose about 440 pages, not too long, but it is one that really interests me. So again, I'm really looking forward to getting to that. The next one to the one that was on the TBR jar last year, so it's been on there longest. It's kind of battered because it's right near my wall. And this is The Girl in the Window by Rowan Coleman. I love Rowan Coleman's contemporaries, and this is like a bit of a historically fictiony kind of it's set in the Yorkshire Moors, which you know I love. It's Pondon Hall, is a centuries old house on the Yorkshire Moors. And it's where Trudy Hill Teton grew up and where she ran away from. Now, after the devastating loss of her husband, she's returning home with her young son, Will, who refuses to believe his father is dead. When Trudy tries her best to for her son, she must also attempt to build bridges with her eccentric mother. And then this is a, apparently is supposed to be a beautiful story of love, hope, and yeah, looks really good. Really excited by that. One I need to get read, so I'm hoping the TBR jar gives it to me this year, because the rule is, if it doesn't, it gets got rid of. Or I have to read it, you know. Then to a thrill, to like, um, this is like a fantasy series that my mum loved. And I believe that one of my lovely colleagues from um, reading it, she loved it. This is a fantasy series that even, if my mum loved this fantasy series, then it's got to be good. But I found this in the charity shop in, um, on holiday. And I, I thought I'd try the first in the series. And if I like it, I'll pick up the other books in the series. So for as long as she can remember, Evangeline Fox is believed in happily ever after until she learns that the love of her life is about, about to marry another and their dreams are shattered. Desperate to stop the wedding and heal her wounded heart, Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at a time and place of his choosing. But Evang after Evangeline's first promise kiss, she learns the bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game. And the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than she coached. Ooh. And this is quite pretty. Look at this. Oh, it's in the face back, but look. Look at the end pages. Very rare you get a gorgeous face back with lovely end pages, but it's pretty, pretty, so pretty. So I'm looking forward to this. I wonder when the TBR jar is going to give me that. It's not my YA fantasy, that is, because I do like a bit of YA fantasy. Now to a middle grade fantasy. And this is The Last Firefox by Lee, Lee Newbury. It's a gorgeous sprayed edges edition. I know Charlie from Charles Heathcote read this and loved it. And it's, oh, it just looks gorgeous. You need to be brave for yourself before you can be brave for other people. Between bullies at her school and changes at home, Charlie Callanor finds a bit, a bit life a bit scary. So when he's made guardian of a fairy fox called Cube Cadno, things get a lot, whole lot scarier because Cadno isn't just any fox, he's a fire fox, the only one of his kind and a serious and sinister hunter from another world is on his, hot on his trail. It's got a lead character called Charlie, I don't need to know anymore, middle grade, fantasy, tackling bullying, this looks every bit of what I could wish for. Then to another book that I found randomly and this is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I found this in the charity shop. It was shortlisted for the Women's Pride in 2018. I know a lot of people have liked this. I really don't know much about this one. It, it's an intimate portrait of family, an epic tale of hope and struggle. Sing Unbury Sing examines the power and limitations of family bond. I really don't want to know too much about this. I know it's had good reviews and I'm really looking forward to it. But again, I needed to get this. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now I've got three contemporaries now to show you. All of which are ones that I'm looking forward to, but again, they can be read. They're not stressed to be read. So the first one is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I have loved, I didn't, loved um, one of Yumi and Vaca Vacation. I thought Beach Read was okay. So this is my other book that I'm looking forward to seeing if I like. It's my other book by Emily Henry. Nora is a top throat, t a cutthroat literary agent at the top of her game. Her whole life is book. Always a good thing. Charlie is an editor with a gift for creating bestsellers, and he is Nora's work nemesis. Nora has been through enough breakups to know she is one man. She is the one man date 
before finding their happily ever after. To prevent another dating dad, Nora's sister persuades her to swap her city desk for a month's break in Sunshine Falls. And then she's bumping into Charlie. Love. Hopefully I'll like it. Then to an author I know I love. I love this. This is her latest book that was out last year. I love Marley McFarlane's book. Some secrets are meant to be between us. And this is uh, this was out last year, but I got it in a charity shop, so that was good. When Joe and Rossine join their family group group of friends for a weekend away, it's a triple celebration: a birthday, an engagement, and the launch of Joe's new crime drama on TV. But when Rossine sees secrets that she shared with Joe play out on the TV screen, she knows that between us means nothing at all. Oh my God, this looks so good. Rossine starts searching for clues for the truth about her own life, the history, and the man she thought she loved and finds an unexpected plot twist. Why do I want that? I'm really liking this. Then talk about the cat. I This is another book I bought last year, The Cozy Cat Society. A perfect cure for the lonely humans awaits. It's got cats in the title. It's pink. It's got a sofa. I can't bloody wait for this. An uplifting, feel-good read that will bring joy to your heart. Five strangers meet a cat sanctuary after each facing difficult difficulties in her life. Sasha struggles with the breakup of a heartbreak of her past and is forced to build a new light out, life out of a difficult childhood. Paul has worked hard to break free from the controlling relationship and is ready to find real love. Luke is searching for his biological parents, desperate to discover the answers about his life that he so fiercely needs. Anna finds solace from her troubled mind in an animal therapy. And lastly, there is Mim, the social butterfly who no one expects to be hiding a secret pain. Brought together by their love of cats, these different people might just find that friendship is the last place in the last place that anyone expected. I love cats. A lot of the Waffle Girls like cats. I am cat fan. This is just, I can't bloody wait for this. I don't know why it's taking me so long to even put it on the jar. It's another one I want the jar to give me soon. Then, last but not least, this is Untamed by, Glo by Glenn Doyle. It's for many years, this is Glenn Doyle's story. It's a chunky book. Who were you before the world told you who to be? And this is about Glenn, Glenn and Doyle has defied her discontent. One day at a conference, she glanced up at the women and three words were flooded to her mind. There she is. At first, Glenn assumed these words came from a high, on high, but she soon realises they came from within. This was the voice she'd buried beneath decades of numbing addictions and social conditioning. Glenn then decides to let go of what the world's expectations of her and reclaim her true untamed self. I'm really looking forward to this non-fiction. It could be quite good. So, those are the books. This is the TBR jar. Let's see what it gives me when. They are all books. None of these books are one of the trading apart from 1984, which I'm kind of concerned about. That's probably the only one I think that I'm a little bit concerned about. All the rest of them I'm really excited about. They're all books that I can't wait for. Do you guys do a TBR jars? Do you have any jars that you that, that help you pick your books? Because randomization is quite good for me. I know it's something that helps me kind of focus and it gives me a chance to just push my boundaries. I don't do randomness, but I'm excited by this. Now, if you got to the end of this video, do like a jar or cup emoji, because I like my jars. So do a jar or cup emoji if you got to the end of this video. And I hope you like it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribe yet, ring on my ding-a-ling. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.